Hey, this video is a tour of Cellscape, our virtual reality experience inside a human cell. We'll talk about what you're actually seeing in this environment, the different parts of the cell, and how they work together. If you haven't seen it yet, Cellscape is best experienced with a VR headset, like Google Cardboard. Pull up the video in YouTube on your phone, click the viewer button, and then place the phone in a VR headset. If you don't have a VR headset, you can still navigate around the environment if you watch in YouTube, on your phone, or in Google Chrome. This experience puts us in the middle of a human cell. So what is a cell? Cells are like tiny blocks that build living things. Dogs, plants, fish, you name it. They're all made of cells. Almost everything in your body is made of cells. Your heart is made of cells, and your lungs, and your skin, and your nerves. Your body is made up of about 40 trillion cells. They're really small. Here, we are inside one of these tiny cells. If the cell actually looked like this, we'd be so small. Think about how tall a grain of salt is. You'd be a few thousand times shorter. And the cell is definitely a busy place. There's so much inside and so much going on, it looks almost like an alien landscape. Let's talk about what's happening here. There are a lot of large structures around here with strange shapes that look almost like sculptures. These are called organelles. They're like body organs, but for the cell. And each of them have different functions. We'll talk more about the organelles in a minute. At various locations in the cell, you'll see lots of small particles floating around, like here and here. The cell is filled with proteins, and they have all sorts of different jobs. A cell also spends a lot of its time and energy making new proteins. The proteins definitely look like they're floating, and they kind of are. The inside of the cell, called the cytoplasm, is filled with a thick, jelly-like liquid called cytosol. What prevents the insides of the cell from just spilling out? Well, the cell is surrounded by something that's sort of like a flexible skin. It's called the cell membrane, and you can kind of see it in some places. It keeps the insides of the cell in and the outside out. Towards the top of the cell, you can see lots of long chains crisscrossing in the distance. These are parts of the cell's cytoskeleton. Like the bones in your body or the frame of a building, the cytoskeleton provides structure for the cell and helps give it shape. You'll also see some really large oval-shaped structures towards the top of the cell. These are organelles called mitochondria. The mitochondria are often known as the powerhouses or the power plants of the cell, and their main job is to take in food and create energy the cell needs to survive. Pretty much everything in the cell relies on energy created by the mitochondria. Now remember how we said that a cell spends a lot of time and energy making proteins? Well, not only is that true, but many of the parts of the cell are dedicated to making and processing new proteins. Let's look at how this process happens. These here are parts of a ribosome which makes protein. You'll see a yellow chain float up. This is a strand of messenger RNA, or mRNA, and it carries instructions for how to make a protein. The two parts of the ribosome come together around the mRNA. The ribosome and mRNA attach to part of an organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER. The ribosome reads the instructions on the mRNA as it moves through, and it uses these instructions to build a new protein. Now the protein that just got made, we can't see it because it came out of the bottom of the ribosome and got pushed through a hole into the endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, which is kind of like a massive network of pipes. Here's a better view of the endoplasmic reticulum. When you explore the cell, you'll see that there are actually two types. One type has little orange dots. This is known as rough ER. And another type doesn't. It's called smooth ER. 
The orange dots are called translocon pores. They're little holes in the ER. Ribosomes attach to these holes and push newly made proteins right into the ER. After they're made, proteins move through the channels of the ER to different locations, and many of them end up in the Golgi apparatus, which is here. See how those round blobs are coming off of it? The Golgi is like the post office of the cell. It receives proteins from the ER, sorts them, packages them up, and ships them off to their proper destinations. Proteins get packaged up inside those round blobs, which are called vesicles. And here is how the vesicles get transported and delivered around the cell. They get pulled along by something that looks like feet. These little feet are proteins called kinesin. The track that they're walking along is a structure called a microtubule. Microtubules are almost like train tracks. The vesicle will get walked along this microtubule until it gets where it needs to go. But the interesting thing about microtubules is that they're not permanent. They can get taken apart and put together in different locations depending on what the cell needs. Here, the microtubule is being built or assembled from smaller parts that come together. Watch how they're added to the end. This is a process called polymerization. The small things they're made up of are proteins called tubulin. Here's a microtubule that's coming apart or depolymerizing. If you look below in this environment, you'll see the top of the nucleus, which is where the DNA is kept. You can't actually see the DNA. DNA is precious and important, so it's kept safe in the nucleus, surrounded by a membrane similar to the membrane around the cell itself. If the cell needs to use a part of the DNA, it makes an RNA copy of it, and then that copy can leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm. RNA is like a disposable copy of part of the DNA. On the surface of the nucleus, there are little holes or pores that look like purple donuts. After being made, the RNA copies would leave the nucleus through these holes, which are known as nuclear pores. Okay, now we talked a lot about how the cell makes new proteins. But how does it get rid of the old ones that it doesn't need anymore? That's where these things come in. They're called proteasomes. The proteasomes are like the cell's garbage trucks and recycling centers for proteins. They grab onto proteins that are no longer needed and they break them down into tiny pieces. You can see the pieces being released from the back. And interestingly, the proteasome is itself a protein. So it's sort of like a cannibal protein that eats other proteins. Well, that's about it for our tour. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the beautiful microscopic world inside our cells. Oh, and lastly, a big shout out to my partners here. I developed Cellscape in partnership with Ex Vivo Scientific Animation, and the project was made possible by the Google Making and Science team. Thank you so, so much.